I'm an alumnus of Memorial University of Newfoundland, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the university today with this video. I'm going to present it in a way that I haven't really seen it presented before. There's a couple of very important things that international students may be specifically interested in. So that's the point of this video. So I'm at the UC right now. UC is the university center. It's kind of like a hub for the for the whole university. There's a pedway that connects the buildings going across Princeville Drive. A few places to grab a bite or a coffee and they're all closed at the moment. When I go to the university with my cameras, I try to show up on days when I'm pretty certain that there won't be a lot of people around. Make it awkward for anybody or make anybody feel like there's some old man on campus with a camera just spying on everybody. So if you notice that it's uh, pretty empty, that's why. The university is very lively. When school is in session, this is where you can go to, to grab yourself a snack and meet some friends and just sort of hang out if that's what you feel like doing. Yeah, this is, like I said, the hub of the university in a lot of ways where you can kind of you know, just be in the heart of the university while you eat or decompress or whatever you're doing between classes. The library is one of my favorite buildings on campus. I'm going to talk a little quieter here now, even though I'm on the stairwell, just because it's you know, good manners, I guess, to be quiet in the library. This is the big staircase looking building from the outside, and uh, there's lots of different sections with uh, private rooms or just quiet areas. And I spent a lot of time here when I was actually doing my studies because it's just a really comfortable place to, to sit down and read or just do whatever you need. Um, one of the older buildings on campus that is holding up really well. And like I said, my favorite building, I think probably on the whole campus. I didn't go to university right out of high school. I started, I was actually out of high school for 10 years before I started, so I was a late starter. And when I got going, I, I actually really enjoyed what I was doing. So I kind of got rolling with a, a Bachelor of Arts. My, my major was sociology, but I had a lot of credits that would actually go towards a business degree. And um, I decided to actually complete two degrees and I graduated in 2015. I finished my studies in 2014, but I had a couple of things that I was trying to do with my mom who went back to school to finish her studies as well. So I decided to graduate the same year as her 2015. This is a fair sized comprehensive university, meaning it covers quite a few subject areas. There's no law school here, but there has been some talk about introducing the law school, but there's a medical school, great faculty of education. The white building out there is actually the newest building on campus. It's the new and improved science building. An excellent business program. So there's lots of, of uh, options if you were to study at Memorial University, what your focus could potentially be. I believe it's still the largest university in Atlantic Canada by enrollment. There's been a lot of things happening over the past two years that have affected the size of the student population here uh, negatively but basically the situation right now seems to be stabilized. There was some changes made to the leadership. The president was basically asked to leave, to put it nicely. There was a tuition freeze from the mid nineties up until about two years ago. And it definitely uh, had an effect on the uh, size of enrollment, the actual numbers of students that were attending Memorial University, um, international students in particular. It's really important to, to always remember that when the fishery collapsed and closed in 1992, the population of Newfoundland declined drastically and rapidly. And the people that moved were essentially young people, people of the age that would be either considering creating a family or people that were in the process of starting a family. Basically what happened was the youngest population in Canada in the mid to late 80s quickly became the oldest population because all of the young folks left and then when they had children they were born in other places contributing to the other provinces and Newfoundland had this huge hole cut into the population demographic table if you want to call it that and it's only starting to recover now. Memorial University is one of the biggest drivers of that. The tuition freeze removal it's really early in the process to really know how much of an impact that's going to have on the university as a whole. The tuition here 
is still amongst the lowest in the country. It's not nearly as low as it was, but it is still lower. The fact that it was by far the lowest in the country outside of Quebec was such a driving force for people that wanted to come to Canada and wanted to come to a good school. It is a good school. It's not just a cheap school. But people were able to make an easy decision when tuition was a major factor and where they would go. So Memorial University, St. John's, and Newfoundland in general really benefited from the tuition freeze in more than just one way. So we'll see. It's hard to say what's going to happen now. Memorial University is a designated learning institution, one of two organizations or institutions in Newfoundland that is part of the DLI system, the other being the College of the North Atlantic. College of the North Atlantic typically offers two-year diplomas. There are some certificate programs. There are some bridging programs toward a degree. There may even be some degree programs. I'm not sure about College of the North Atlantic, but that's located in St. John's, just up the street from the Memorial University of Newfoundland campus, St. John's campus. But there's also the headquarters is actually in Stephenville on the West Coast, and they have satellite campuses all over Newfoundland. I think I want to do a separate video about College of the North Atlantic. I need to learn a little bit more about it. The Memorial University is my alma mater, so I know a lot more about it and I can kind of jump into it. CNA, I don't know as much, so I'll do a little bit more preparation and, and do a separate video on that. But these are the two DLI organizations that exist in the province. So for anybody who's thinking about coming to Canada from, from outside of Canada, hoping to study and get their education and then eventually get an open work permit towards potentially permanent residence application in the future, these are the two options that you have. It's Memorial University as the only university available and College of the North Atlantic as you know, a trade school sort of specialized college program that you can also use for the uh, post-grad work permit if that's what you're thinking about. Memorial also has a big, well not big campus, but a fair sized campus, the Grenfell campus over in Cornerbrook on the west coast of Newfoundland. There is the Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador campus in, in Labrador. They also have the Harlow campus, Memorial University of Newfoundland Harlow campus in Harlow, England, fairly close to London. That's been part of the organization now for a few decades. And then in St. John's, outside of the campus itself, you have the Marine Institute, which is not located too far from where I'm sitting right now at the UC, at the center of the university. But it was at one time its own institution, but it has now been incorporated into the Memorial University overall campus. I just want to say something quick about the uh, distance education that Memorial University offers. So I graduated 10 years ago and I, I did two degrees. It took seven years to do both degrees. And I started from BC. I, I did about, I'd say, 60% of the full workload uh, in BC and then came here for about 40% of my classes. That's a couple of semesters, four or five semesters here, um, kind of chipping away at it from, from BC over the, the years that I was there. Memorial University established itself as a leader in distance education a long time ago. Actually, before what we know as distance education with like online tools, it was correspondence. They would actually mail materials, physical hard copies, books and notes and things like that. And students would self-pace within a certain time frame and, and study and write an exam. And that was that, you know, correspondence. Distance education, you actually had a professor that was involved. And some of them had scheduled online classes through D2L, at Desire to Learn. I think that's still a platform, kind of like a you know um, video conferencing software that enabled sharing and screen sharing things like that. And uh, the distance education world has really opened up since COVID, obviously with school shutdowns and things like that. But Memorial has been doing it for years and doing it well. I got a great education, more than half of it, I think over the computer, right? I struggled with math. I did okay when I actually came on campus. I needed that for math and statistics, which is very mathematical as well. There were some other classes that I enjoyed being in a classroom with the back and forth between other students and or with the teacher. So you kind of benefit from that as well. But for the most part, like I had no problem getting my lessons and, and sitting through the one or two classes per week with the teacher and doing my work on my own, right? I was able to do that. So in person is definitely really important for some people and the experience of being on university, especially for like a, an 18, 19 year old right out of high school, it's pretty important. I didn't start school till I was 28, right? Finished when I was in my mid thirties. It didn't matter to me that uh, I wasn't getting the full university experience because I kind of got that in different ways, right? In my late teens, early twenties. So that was that. But just to, to mention the distance education uh, program that Memorial University has 
been running for years is excellent. So if it's something that you're thinking about doing, even if you come to Canada and we can take a, an online class here or there, the quality of the education is super high. So as you can see, it's just an endless line of lockers. This is one of the underground tunnels in the main system. It covers a lot of ground. And then there are some overground pedways that also have lockers and basically just for um, obviously keeping stuff stored, but for the uh, ease of getting around when the weather is not good, which is quite often around here. So yeah, pretty cool system. There are some upgrades that I see to some of this since I was here 10 years ago. But yeah, this is the main tunnel system. It's been almost 10 years, but I still know my way around this tunnel system pretty well. Man, I really miss coming here after just walking through the tunnels and going to the UC. Like I've been in the area, I've been outside, I've been to the Growlers basketball game at the field house. Like I've done stuff in the area, but I haven't actually been in the university in a long time. But I really, really liked studying here, like being on campus. When I would come, I'd be here like, you know, early in the morning and stay all day because I had classes spread out throughout the day. And I liked it. It was just a great place to, to study. Memorial University of Newfoundland is a good school. That's my takeaway from, from everything that I talk about here. It's not a perfect school, but it's a good school. Newfoundland and Labrador owes a lot to where we are today based on the university in general, but specifically events and, and initiatives that have taken place over the last 20, 25 years. Newfoundland hit one of the roughest patches of its long history in 1992 with the closure of the cod, the northern cod fishery, and the exodus of young working age people from the province in the late 90s and early 2000s. The university acted as somewhat of a breakwater, stopping the complete outflow of, of young people in pretty desperate times when jobs were very, very rare. And today, the place that Newfoundland and Labrador finds itself in is in a much better situation than it would have been if the university A didn't exist and B didn't offer some of the special programs and special perks that it did over that period. I don't know where it's going to go in the future. There's a lot of unanswered questions about things like tuition and, and focus on you know a law school or or international student focus things like that but it is a very important institution within the province of Newfoundland and Labrador and for all of its troubles that it's been going through it remains very important and it will into the future. Uh, we owe a lot to the university in terms of you know, weathering the storm of the past two and a half three decades uh, but at the same time the university is kind of at a crossroads right now and I'm very interested to see where it ends up over the course of the next say five ten years and see how the changes that are taking place in the province and in the country as a whole how that shapes the university but also how the university helps shape the province as well.